The Black Pullet is one of the Bibliothèque Bleu grimoires. Uh, it's an 18th century grimoire and uh, Black Letter Press have just put out this very nice um, limited first edition in a purple uh, cloth bound cover with this really nice um, black title and border and um, and a diagram from uh, from the pages within which I'll show you in a few moments showing the stay the snake uh, staff in its extended form and then in its circular form um, so this is the first edition, um, uh, well, first uh, Black Letter Press edition, of course. Um, I'm, I'm really hoping that once this runs out, uh, which should happen quite soon, I've found out that there are 32 copies left in stock. Uh, uh, but uh, what uh, Black Letter Press did with the Red Dragon is that once the first edition had run out, then they put out an unlimited edition with a with a gel text cover. So uh, kind of imitation um, uh, cloth. Um, but uh, but yeah, this is obviously really, really lovely. This is um, this is their, their calling card. Uh, there we go. Quite nice. OK, uh, let me talk a little bit of about the actual contents here. I was really surprised. Uh, so the first thing to note is that this is, yeah, it's an 18th century um, uh, grimoire. So the, the Bibliothèque Bleu grimoires, as you, you probably know by now, um, were grimoires that were sold door to door in uh, rural France. And this was one of the um, uh, the, the said grimoires that were, uh, it was sold door to door and it's written in a narrative form. So it's actually very entertaining to read uh, as opposed to, well, pretty much every other grimoire that you can think of, which is entertaining in its own way. Um, uh, but, uh, you know, mainly um, uh, information rich rather than uh, a aimed at entertainment. But this uh, gives you it gives you information. Uh, in the form of a narrative. So uh, this this uh, soldier gets badly injured um, uh, in Egypt and uh, he finds himself at the foot of the pyramids uh, getting uh, bleeding to death and um, a, uh, a gentleman opens a door in the pyramids uh, where he's clearly residing and uh, takes him in, uh, nurses him to uh, back to, to health and then teaches him all kinds of, uh, of, of wonderful um, uh, bits of information um, ab about how to make mainly talismans. Uh, so uh, this is, uh, yeah, a, an example of such a talisman. Now, I was, I was particularly interested uh, because, well, I've been uh, reading some of the Gallery of Magic books uh, and... I've always been very curious to know where their, well, where some of the symbols that they use have come from. And I found quite a few in the sixth and seventh books of Moses, but it seems that this has been a huge influence for them. Uh, in fact, quite a lot of this suddenly came, um, be, be, became very, very um, uh, obvious to me. Uh, and um, uh, you know, I, I recognize this talisman very well. Um, uh, this this uh, this letter, which when I saw it for the first time on the, um, um, the in fact, this whole <laughs> this whole uh, uh, row of writing. When I first saw it on the Gallery of Magic's books, I thought to myself, well, they, they've just invented that. It, it doesn't make sense. It, it's not any writing that I recognize. And, and there it is. And this this letter over here which looked particularly um, uh, strange to me uh, as, a, as an actual letter, um, actually reoccurs quite regularly. Um, let me find it again. Oh, here it is again, yeah, upside down. So it's like a Z with kind of uh, uh, feathers on, <laughs> on, on its tail and things like that. So, so that's quite interesting. I also found this uh, very interesting talisman. Which one was it? Uh, let me see if I can find it. Oh, maybe it's this one. 
Is it this one? Yes, this is the one. This, talis this talisman thwarts the designs of all who wish you harm and forces the submission of any spirit sent against you. And um, I was uh, I was very interested in this design because it's the design that's used in the Gallery of Magic's uh, 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 Demons of Magic, 72D, is it called? Yeah, just de Demons of Magic, I think it's, it's called, um, uh, where they place actually a triangle within uh, something look looking very similar to this. Uh, and and uh, yeah, this, this uh, is clearly the, well, in... in in my view, it looks very, very much like it would have been an inspiration for uh, their design for keeping the practitioner, the novice practitioner safe as he or she may be um, evoking uh, any of the goetic spirits. So there we go. I thought that was very interesting. In the uh, about two thirds of the way through, I guess. Uh, then we get uh, a couple of prayers. Um, uh, just to, one thing to note is that, yes, while this is definitely low magic, you know, these these are talismans for, um, for bringing wealth and for protection and for curing uh, uh, oneself from, from diseases and so on and so forth. Uh, nevertheless, the, um, the, the general spirit within which they are... Um, they are imparted is um is very much a, a uh, well look, look look at this he stopped and fixed my gaze as if he was reading me what must i renounce renounce all evil and uh, occupy yourself only with good works yeah so just uh, just to say that yeah this is well much like most grimoires right uh, i i in fact i can't really think of any grimoire that doesn't First of all, recommend that the uh, the practitioner renounce evil and devote himself or herself to um, to a life of godliness. Uh, in fact, it seems to be in most, if not all cases, a prerequisite to any of this magic working, which I thought was uh, was very curious and very interesting. Um, uh, Having having heard reports of how demonic this uh, this this work was supposed to be, and, and actually finding it to be quite um, quite on the contrary, quite quite um, quite nice and and uh, and and sweet. Okay. Uh, then there are some uh, recommendations going in a little bit more detail on how to construct the talismans and the rings and of what materials and so on and so forth. This is all referring to these talismans that are talked about in the early pages of the book. And then there is uh, yeah, a, a, a bibliography, basically, um, uh, outlining some very well-known <laughs> uh, sources of information and uh, and grimoires that the uh, that they the the person who put this book together um, originally uh, found useful for his or her studies there we go um and is there anything else in the back uh, yes but i can't remember exactly what uh, there, there is um there is by the way a you know i mean that the name of the book is the black pullet and there is a whole chapter on the black pullet uh, which is basically a, a chicken that doesn't lay golden eggs but rather that um uh, is able to find gold for you now where is that uh where's it gone is it oh, come on uh, whatever it's it's uh, it's it's quite oh here it yeah clearly opened up on on the right place uh, so yes information on how uh, the um, the old man made his black pullet and how uh, one might make a a, a black pullet um, in a um, slightly easier way although not necessarily a very humane way you wouldn't necessarily want to put this uh, to practice although some of the grimoires are very um, very straightforward and don't require any animal cruelty. Uh, there we go. So um, yeah, a, a, a big recommendation. Uh, this is a this is clearly a, a, an important part of uh, grimoire magic and um, and one that is uh, clearly is still an influence 
today. Um, yeah, I'm I'm really really uh, happy. <laughs> it's a it's a it's a wonderful work and um, and and a and a beautiful presentation for it. Um, so there we go. Uh, thanks very much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you did, and to subscribe down below if you haven't already. Thanks very much for watching, and see you soon.